Andrew Horowitz, thanks so much for coming back on Wall Street Unplugged. Hey, thanks for having me, Frank. Appreciate it. Well, let's start right at the beginning with track record, because we're two people in this business that believe in accountability. Even when I have winners, you, you highlight them on your podcast. When I have losers, like I had GE a couple of years ago, I came on explained like I'm a big believer in accountability, whether you're right or wrong. Uh, and I want to just give you credit because, you know, we pay attention to this now. Everyone that we put in front of people, you know, for their picks. And, and one of the picks you gave us was Train Technologies on July 2nd, last time you were on. And that's up 32% easily outperforming the market. So really, really good job on that. Uh, you know what they say, a broken clock is right twice a day. So, yeah, well. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Let's stop there. The record is good. A one for one. <laughs> but I just wanted to highlight, seriously, nice job on that. So I love what Thanks. I, uh listeners make money but let's let's go through what we always go through when we do this right we've been doing this for so long you have a, a podcast just as long as me a little bit longer probably the longest running podcast in, in the financial industry if i if i had to guess at least one I'm of the them OG. I mean, they call the og a podcast in the financial area think about how many years how many years how many back to 2007 wow yeah isn't it amazing That's... i never thought the industry of podcasts would be like it is today right and now everybody has a podcast yeah, everybody. It's everybody. like common. It's just, you know, yeah. I'm like, hey, I got a podcast. Like, me too. I was like, yeah, I got one for 13 <laughs> right. years. <laughs> right. Back then, it was like, uh, hey, I'm doing a podcast. Uh, what's a podcast, right? I mean, that was kind of what the the thought was back then. But it's really expanded. I mean, and we talked about that Amazon now has a whole podcasting network. We got Spotify popping up with a real uh, move into that area as well and, and other companies that are, are are really pressing that whole thing. And obviously there's, you know, incredible amount of talent that has really come into this. And, and that's, you know, a lot of it is back to the same story we talk about all the time, Frank, is what, what's really pushing all this and it's technology, right? It, it's the ability to shrink down the required technical components of what you need to actually make this happen. Because back then, the quality, I mean, I listened to some of the stuff back in 2007 and 2008. I did it. It sounded awful. And it was really difficult to do. And you had to worry about like, okay, well, you know, the file size can't be too big because people can't download it. Now you can pop up, you know, a four gig video up to YouTube and it's ready within a couple of hours after it processes into high def. And it's available for everybody to, to look, you know, look at infinitum. It is it is pretty incredible. I, I mean, for me, uh, it's never lost on me the global impact of how many people globally because, you know, it's on iTunes. So, you know, it's just one of the platforms that we're on and you're on. But I get emails all over the world, like all over yeah. the world. And it's really helped me tremendously in places where I mean, you know how the media is, you know, almost every media ha has an agenda, whatever side you're on. I won't get into that part. But uh, it's nice to know for getting information from the sources and just people that live, you know, boots on the ground uh, across the world. And and I can't tell you, I would say about 20 percent of, of listeners are outside the U.S. And, yep. uh, you know, just it's pretty incredible to say, wow, wow you listen to me. What are you crazy? Like, where are yeah, you? I got people from <laughs> all of Asia that write me and Australia and South Africa. So I, it, it is really cool that it's so easily accessible these days. And And, and that's good for us, too in our business, right? I mean, as you were saying, it's boots on the ground, but it's also the information is much different today to gather. Whereas back, you know, 20 years ago, you'd have to go to the newspapers, the dailies and do your research. That was really, or, or the corporate reports, of course, but, you know, to get any kind of information now, it's just, you know, type in a symbol and there's 25 different ways from Sunday to get information on whatever you want. So it's been, it's, it's a, it's been pretty good. And that is exactly really what's been driving the markets these days, right? Same thing. It's just, a, you know, uh, th this whole uh, technology revolution and a renaissance, if you will, has been really condensed down because it, 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 it's, it's due to necessity in times where we have lockdowns and stay-at-home orders. And, you know, we've seen companies after companies come up with new solutions to make life relatively easy to continue working, which, you know, we all got to do something, right? It's true. You know, I talked about this on the last podcast in my opening, how you, this is a behavioral change. Like mm -hmm. you, you don't really like oh, total sales. Again, when you look at total retail sales, which include gasoline and everything, uh, you know, online e-commerce only counted 11 for 11% 11 of total sales. And that was last year, this year it's already up to 16%, which is a, a drastically game changing move. in, in that statistic, uh, but it just shows you how much the growth, how much growth it has going forward. And you don't realize how many people weren't on Amazon when, you know, everybody knew about Amazon. But but now how many people talk about I got packages all over my house. I didn't know I could get towels and, and whatever and just, you know, milk delivered to my door next day. And 
you know, when you're forcing someone into doing something a better way and they're like, all right, now that it's, you know, it's resulting in so many of these online businesses, because I want to talk to you about that. We can talk about the overall markets, but we could just get right in since it's a good segue is uh, when I'm looking at these technology companies and people talk about valuations and how crazy they are, they're right. The valuations are crazy, but you can't deny the massive growth numbers these companies are putting up in certain sectors where you know, tech, biotech, e-commerce, right? I mean, you see numbers of uh, Amazon, Walmart, Zoom, Microsoft, companies in, in the auto and housing sectors. I mean, did you see AutoZone's numbers today? Uh, yes, it's pulling back a little bit, but it's at near its all-time high. Toll Brothers, I mean, the numbers were amazing. Again, a stock that run up tremendously and pulled back a little bit. But the, the numbers these guys are putting up, if you're in the right industry at the right time, are amazing. Is that going to continue? Is it already played out? I mean, is this market, yeah. you know, what do you expect here? <laughs> That's a great question because, the, you know, it all... I think is going to be based on, I mean, this is obvious, what the future holds. I mean, all right, let's just state that point. But are we going to have a change in our habits so dramatically and drastically that we will continue to do what we've done? Listen, I've changed my habits. It's been Christmas in my office over the last five years every single day. I mean, there are packages delivered always because it makes it so easy through an Amazon or an Office Depot, whatever it is. You know, if I need paper clips, I don't think about, I right, put it on the list and next time I get out there, I'm like, click, free delivery, $3.50 pack of paper clips comes the next day or ink. You know, the old days of, of having to go out and do this stuff, whereas today it's so much easier. So I think there is the continuation of the retail boom, which is good for online and those more importantly, not only that have the product, but make the process easy for the individual, for the user and the experience for the user to be one that's just click, 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 done, right? Like Amazon has mastered. On the other hand, you look at the places like malls as, as the other side of the equation or some of those big box retailers that didn't have their act together to begin with for years, was having a lot of problem uh, to begin with with what was going on. But now they just were overrun by the online process, especially – once people realize that there is free returns, that's the big issue, right? You know, if, if I don't have free returns, I can't get three or four different sneakers to see which one I like. But now I just go shopping online. I'm like, okay, that's a size 11. I'll take that wide. I'll take the size 10 and a half in this one. And do you I'll do that. Uh, you buy like four pairs and then send yes. three back. My wife does that. I trust me. Absolutely. Crazy. Absolutely. <laughs> that's great. Why not? I mean, it's so easy. And Amazon has the, I mean, that separates themselves from everybody. It's not like the Amazon show here. It sounds like we just talked, but I mean, we had we got uh, plastic cups delivery, which you know, just on schedule, to, and they came like all messed up or whatever. You know, they were just like sticking together, and we said, hey, you know, they, they send us like two for free the next day. It wasn't even like they question anything. They just send it, and they see you a good customer. It's just it, it's really cool to get that kind of service too. I mean, but, they, yeah, they got they also, there's a problem with this also because it does hurt some businesses that need to keep up with this. You know, fortunately, Amazon's not just Amazon retail. It's AWS. You know, they have a lot of other components. Um, I mean, I just bought some shirts from a company called uh, Roosevelt, R-S-V-L-T-S, and they have some crazy, crazy shirts, okay? There was a couple that I really liked for, like, backyard barbecuing. It Like, you could, you'll could, you see the shirts if you, if you look at them. You're like, oh, that's yeah. a backyard. That's a backyard barbecue shirt. You know what I mean? You got to have a beer in one hand and a – and a spatula in the other. Um, and, you know, I got the I got the size in and it was too small. I got another size that was too large. I just took theirs, tried it on, sent it back, and it's all free. So that's got to cost them a little bit on the bottom line. But it, it, it's good for certain companies. And clearly we saw the numbers from FedEx and UPS and other delivery. I mean, it's it's there is a lot in there. But, but I still question whether or not we're going to want to go back to the days where we can actually, you know, browse. For example, a store like Bed Bath & Beyond, right? Now, you can get a lemon squeezer or you can get a knife from any online or online at Best Bed Bath & Beyond for that matter or Walmart, depending on what you're, you know, the quality you want, what you want. But there's something about going and saying, you know, that lemon squeezer, you know, it's plastic and I don't know if it's going to let me kind of feel it and touch it and see what the story is. I prefer to get the metal one. Or that knife, you know what? only like the handle, the way I hold it in my hand. Now, you could do that by going back and forth, back and forth. But if somewhere has a selection of things, while they have the carrying cost for that inventory, it still has a little bit of appeal for the shopping experience. And there is, I, I don't 
necessarily think that's ever going to go away entirely. Uh, but some businesses should, like the automobile industry. I've talked about this for years. The floor planning model where they have you know thousands of cars on the lot and they're paying while some of the, uh, the, the, the companies themselves are paying back the individual um, you know, owners at the various franchises, uh, you know, some of the costs for carrying the, the cars. It's just no reason to be doing that anymore when you can have an environment where you have a just-in-time process of delivery and you know what's happening with AI involved in your ordering process. And look what Tesla did. Tesla, you go there, they have like four cars. You can look at them or whatever it is, five cars, whatever the number is. But there's, there's not much going on. They have a little storefront. There's not a lot and of that, things. That's a that's not even their choice. They just won't let them – like the car company, they said, you know, third-party dealerships for them. So they said, okay, well, we have to open up our own stores basically. But that's, yeah, they that's just a have beautiful to. model. That's what they do in Europe. That's right. what they do a lot, a lot of around in Europe. You don't see these gigantic – I mean, where else in, other than America do you see the opportunity to just have like, you know, 25 acres worth of cars? You know, it just doesn't exist. Sure. So that's definitely true. But, but it's interesting. But like you said, there's some industries – that are thriving. We know there's some that aren't, whether it's gyms, whether it's travel companies, even though some of them are coming back. At, you know, let's talk about everything as a whole because everyone's so focused about short term. We've seen since September, the market has come down. People are nervous. You know, it's up tremendously, right, to put things in perspective, up tremendously, yeah. right? So, so, you know, the pullback, I think, is healthy. Uh, but when I look at the underlying conditions with the Fed said, basically, you know, I was like, they're going to implement yield curve control, which is which they basically did. Right. So they, they mm -hmm. said except they did it on short term instead of long term. But if rates go high, they're going to implement it and put a cap on long term. But they said we're going to keep short term rates at zero for three, three years. I mean, that it automatically what that does to the it, it forces money into the market. Right. There's no place you can generate income. It, it's more people going to be taking out loans, you know, interest rates lower. It's a stimulant to the economy that's going to be there. So for me, when I look at pullbacks, I'm not saying that, hey, the market's going to come back. You don't have to worry. But I feel like I could always find opportunities when I see pullbacks like this because the underlying conditions, uh, you know, not just the Fed itself, but we have you know, interest rate policy, right? We're talking about, you know, fiscal policy as well because the separation between Main Street and Wall Street is going to get wider and wider that they're going to continue eventually, the politicians, you know, Throwing more money at this, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the amount of money flooding the markets, COVID getting better and better in terms of statistics, where eventually they'll go away, you know, maybe not 100 percent. But it just seems like the underlying factors, the long term drivers uh, are still in place for, for, you know, positive results in the stock market. I, I think there was two things, you know, talk about the Fed for a second. I think it was two ways to look at what the Fed was saying. And one was, OK, hey, you know what, we're going to go from 2022 and we're going to expand our zero interest rate program, the ZERP to 2023, right? So you're like, wow, that's great. And you saw the markets react pretty positively on that news. On the other side of that is this, wait a second. I thought the recovery was going to be happening a little bit faster. There was a lot of discussion about V-shape or maybe a check mark or at least, you know, a kind of a reasonable recovery over a year or so. And all of a sudden they're really concerned and stretching out their zero interest rate policy in 2023. What do they know that we don't know? The second thing the Fed did was, Powell was a little weird in this last discussion where he, he talked about, well, you know, we're going to, uh, we believe we can get our interest rates, uh, inflation rate back to 2% through our inflation averaging process and letting the economy run a little hot and the growth rate up there. But we're not necessarily going to do anything different right now. It's kind of like sitting in a car and saying, hey, I'm going to zero to 60 in three in three seconds, sitting there and not putting your foot on the gas pedal, just hoping, willing the car to go faster. So there was no real structural change in their last discussion about how they were going to get to this point of the, in the future. But the other thing I'll mention, Frank, is that there's something that's kind of underneath the surface that I really believe is happening, and that's inflation. Now, while they may not be actually increasing rates – because they said so, right? They said till 2023, that's what it's going to be. The problem is the inflation averaging discussion, which is something that we knew about, they were talking about about a year and a half ago. And they implemented this because they know they want the markets to be set for the fact that there is inflation coming. And as such, they don't want the markets to believe they're going to be 
in, in uh, immediately raising rates in order to combat this. The only reason that they're utilizing this inflation averaging is not because they really want to make up for something. It's so that they don't spook the markets because inflation is coming. I don't think there's any question about that. So now you have to reset. Yeah. You have to reset yourself. Okay, well, what does that mean for certain areas of the market? Yeah, and for those of you who think, uh, you know, we have an inflation for, forever. Forever. Right? It seems like. Forever. <laughs> uh, but, you know, people compare this to, to past stimuluses, and if we look at the credit crisis, we, we have to remember this is different. This is very, very different where, uh, you know, you're looking at, first of all, the amount of money we're looking at, at less than $500 billion when all of a sudden done for TARP, but that went directly to the banks, right? That went directly to the banks. It's differently. Or they could lend it to whoever they want to, and, and, you know, we all know what happened. They got bigger and bigger and bigger. The money that's being delivered right now, which is 12, 13x just right now, bigger than TARP, right? We're talking trillions and trillions, over six trillion. It's going directly to consumers. They're getting checks in the mail. I mean, this is money going directly to them, bypassing the economy, bypassing me working, just going from the government to the actual person. And, you know, I remember, I think it was you know, last month and the month before when I looked at, at the statistics, I look every single month, but it was funny to see uh, what was it, personal income lower. A personal spending higher, yeah, <laughs> like, right. You know because that, so that is going to cause inflation. It's just a matter of time. And it's funny. I I got the same thing where they're like, well, well you know, two percent's that rate, but if it goes high, like they keep mentioning it, like because they love to prepare and they love to to let everyone know up front. This way, it doesn't come out of nowhere. But I agree with you. And let's say if we get inflation and you know we go above the two percent threshold, we see stocks do well early on in, in an inflationary environment. Uh. Do you switch portfolios, or you, you know, you allocation wise? Uh, you know, what are you looking to do to set I mean, up where you know we have inflation? It, I mean, you would you would think that you would have to go for more of the you know away from in theory. In theory, you'd go away from your growth orientation once you get into that mode into more of the the value. I mean, you'd think that in an inflationary environment, you should see a yield curve that starts to spread out a little bit more. You'd think, and then banks should do well. Let's. I mean, the banks are are, are horrible. I mean. Wells Fargo down 55% this year, Bank of America down 31%. I mean, Morgan Stanley, Goldman, a little bit better because they have obviously trading, but those banks that are front facing to the consumer and that have very little trading components to them uh, or investment banking for that matter, not doing well at all. So, you know, is that one area that you would want to look at? Um, and I don't, I think that you have to right now, uh, and I heard a really interesting discussion yesterday. You know, it's all about a rate environment. What do the rates mean? What areas will do well? You know, should you be in long term bonds right now? Or do you have the chance to say, hey, you know what? Maybe I should shorten those maturities. We shortened our maturities a year ago, uh, two years ago. We've been kind of shortening up our maturities in all of our bond components for the last couple of years, thinking that, you know what, how much lower are rates going to go? Yeah, they've gone lower, but how much more am I going to squeeze out of the total return versus just the yield? And it makes sense to be, I think, on the shorter side of the yield curve right now. The other problem is, and I'll tell you this, this is an observation and it's something that we implemented because there is a valuation issue that you get to the, the end of the possible stretching of of multiples and what happened in the beginning of this year that multiples before all this covid multiples were kind of exp you know a little little bit weird right remember that in the before the start of this year we started mm -hmm. seeing that big stretch out we came into this year light on equities in our in our long short strategy the tdi managed growth strategy we had a 38 percent position in equities three months later i found this really interesting after the the um the, the whole drop of the markets and all that, uh, our, our screening strategy, which we don't uh, change, we had a 67% equity allocation, okay? Which I was like, huh, how's that gonna work through all this, right? But it worked out really well. Now, September 1st, what was interesting was that, that same exact screening process, which we're looking for growth of earnings, growth of revenue, um, high ROE, we're looking at uh, margin expansion, a whole host of fundamental data. On September 1st, this is really, we'll call it lucky. Well, I'm, I'm the, the clock was right twice, right? So this is my second time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so, on September 1st, we dropped that equity allocation to 27% because we could not find names that met the criteria because they were so out of range or they, or not even on a valuation standpoint, we couldn't find the growth. 
across the board uh, that met and with. You're right. There's some companies that, I mean, if you look at like the Zooms I'll throw in there, Lavonga Health, uh, if I'm saying that right, but the, the, you know, there's companies in there that are seeing tremendous growth, but Tesla's not really seeing the growth to drive that stock price. Uh, you know, it, it's right. Yeah, you know, there are That's, companies out that there that, that, that yeah, I agree with you 100%. Good. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, I, the thing is that I, I thought it was really interesting that the fundamentals are not playing out now, which kind of makes sense. You know, we're, we're checking on a quarter of a quarter basis from last year, this year, et cetera. Um, and, and what happens is we expand and contract the the equity, core equity exposure dependent on all this. So what's interesting, our core equity is down, you know, let's say 1% now, because we only have 27% uh, versus the S&P was down about 7.5 in September already. So my, my, my theory is right now that we have to be very careful because we're walking through a little bit of a minefield. That doesn't mean don't be invested, right? So I'm not coming... Uh, I'm never totally bearish or totally bullish. It's kind of like, okay, we're we're kind of in the middle all the time. I like to kind of play both sides to a, to a degree. And when we look at our equity allocation, we have a little bit of a, a slant in our other portfolios towards value, which has not been working out. However, in September, you'll notice that this big train wreck that hit the growth, which was probably precipitated by that whale trade, you know, once again, and these are the problems where we're seeing asymmetrical bulging of that balloon. It's not necessarily in all areas. You know, we're seeing that, we're seeing a big bulge in real estate, right? But that's in single family homes in rural areas. But we're seeing that commercial real estate and we're seeing that multifamily homes problematic. You're seeing that certain technology that is front facing to the consumer that is oriented towards cloud is doing really well. And then you have other areas of the market, you know, like banks or like um, leisure and travel, not doing so well. So it's kind of like this, if you think about a balloon, it's it's kind of like a blowing up. So it's not a balloon or a bubble that we're in right now. It's like a blown up uh, latex glove. <laughs> okay. Where we have certain yeah. areas, you follow what I'm saying? Certain areas are kind of like way out of line where other areas are kind of like, you know, didn't get that whole uh, pop from all this. Yeah. And you know what? Let's get into it because I know you love giving picks and, and you know, you usually send me a couple of them before and say, hey, like, you know, these are coming picks I like or I want to short. And, and I want to get to both to, to, to a few of them because they're interesting. The first one is I know no one's going to take your advice on this because it's, you know, yeah, a big so, company. Name. Right. I told people to buy Amazon like 900 and, and people like, oh, you I said, I know. Listen, it's not because. Yeah, I know you pay me to, to recommend stocks that you really don't know about, but when I looked at everything cloud related outside of Microsoft, that was the best company by a mile, and you know we were able to have great gains on it. But you like Microsoft here, right? I mean, Microsoft is kind of like this. I mean, first of all, the management is great, right? You know, uh, compared to what it was years ago, um, it's really well positioned from the work from home. It's cloud. It's got gaming. Bought a company this week. Uh, to really shore up their gaming. And the new Xbox is coming out, and the Xbox S, I believe it's called. Thank you for not calling it Xbox Plus, by the way. You know, every company is like Apple Plus or this Plus, um, Apple News Plus. That's, the, that, that's what they pay millions of dollars to their advertising company to come up with a new name for a new service. And they say, just put a plus on it, you know? So uh, Wall Street Unplugged Plus. So Microsoft is a great recovery play. I think the balance sheet is just, come on, it's pristine. They're doing everything right across the board. The problem you may have is a little bit of um, a situation if unemployment stays up for a long period of time, possibly they'll lose some of their uh, income with relation to the the seats that they sell in terms of uh, either, either office or Windows, but uh, that is just a part of the whole process. So Microsoft... I mean, I, I can't really find a hole except from a little bit maybe evaluation. But, I, I, you know, I, long term, I just don't see a hole there in, unless we come up with some totally different OS and, and get away from from Microsoft. But I, it's, it, we've tried. It's just not happening. I mean, I don't know. Do you see any holes there? No, no, I don't see any holes there. I mean, it, it's Microsoft, Amazon, Google. I mean, these companies are so large, so big controlling everything i mean it's out of control right now and you can't stop it i mean it's funny where you know trump's been angry about them they're suppressing certain information not others whatever you know so both sides could get a little pissed off but even if you're looking to break up these companies they're going to be so much bigger but i wouldn't be surprised if that happens to some of these especially with, with some of the things that you know they'll just suppress things on one side not the other and 
you know, it's interesting because it's a free speech platform and you don't want, you know, negative stuff on it, but, or just people lying, but it's hard to filter that out. You know, you, you filter out one way, you got to filter out, but it, it, it's, you know, we know technology is really back in Biden here, right? We all know that. And, and but it, this should, I think the political one, what the, the risk that they're running is if Trump does win, I think he might be, be that pissed to really, you know, have the Justice Department go after these guys to really try to break them up. I mean, I think they great buys if you do that, but these, they're just so huge and so big and know everything. There's a great show, there's a great uh, uh, documentary on Netflix about this, about the whole thing. I forgot what it was called, but it's just how, how they actually track you out. They know exactly what you're going to do, and they're guiding you. Talking about the, the social, you're talking about the social network or something like that? So, so, yeah, I think it's called Social Network. Yeah, I started yeah. watching halfway through. I got so, my hair in the back of my neck was standing up. I'm like, oh, uh, you watch that, you're going to be, like, uh, things I you know, but it re and they have real people on the, who, who work in some of the biggest companies in the world that no longer work for them. I mean, this isn't just people, but you'll see how they try, how they completely control you. They know everything about you. They know what you're going to do, and they steer you towards whatever direction they want. And it's, you know, as big as they are, it's pretty crazy. But Microsoft, but look, Microsoft is a little bit different. Yeah, I think Microsoft has a lot of that, and they may look to break it up. But again, if Microsoft, the breakup value, if you look at, you know, splitting off what? What are you going to split off? You're going to split off the cloud? I don't cloud, think you're going to be able to break off that. Yeah, gaming. social media that then Microsoft or Amazon, I don't see, because, you know, they're just diversified enough. Yeah, exactly. You know, but, so but, but, yeah, I, I think Microsoft's a good, interesting play long term. And, and it's one of those plays that right now I feel comfortable because there is the potential for so much volatility and there is uh, potential for, you know, like you said, election or political risk in some of the names out there and what's happening. And also we have, let, let's not, I know you've been all over this whole virus thing about, hey, let's get them back to school and these numbers are all and all that. I'm not going to argue with with you about it, Frank. I can just tell you that, you know, listen, we're seeing lockdowns in in the UK. We're seeing lockdowns in Israel. I don't know how that relates to the presidential trying to get Trump out of office. But nonetheless, um, there's something going on around the world. This thing is not over yet. This is not over. And yeah, I, I don't just, think it's over. I just think it, it may be blown up to a bit for some things. But you know what? In some regards, people are not taking it seriously on the other side. I mean, it's kind of like both sides, right? The 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 craziness that we see some from, from some media, but the kind of, um, you know, I'm not wearing a mask no matter what, which is just rude. There's such a big medium there, isn't it? Like, we understand that more than 90% of these deaths occurred with people who were over 65 years old who had underlying conditions. We know that. It's fact. We know if you're under 15 years old, you have a better chance of dying in a car accident than your kids getting COVID and dying just from COVID without any underlying conditions, right? These are the facts that are out there. Uh, but everyone's different. But this it's we're all seeing the statistics, but it's not like don't you don't have to wear a mask or, you know, the extreme. You can't go outside and, and you know, in extreme any media site wants to be extreme because you're going to watch it, you know, putting fear into you or just you know, whatever it is. But, you know, for me, wearing a mask, I, I, we, I don't wear it for me. I'm not worried about catching. It. I don't have any underlying conditions, uh, but I wear a mask because I know that it, it you know, older people are at risk. They are at risk. And if I see someone walking towards me like in a store and I have a mask, I actually, if they're older, I'll go through a different aisle because just to make them feel comfortable right. because they are at serious risk of this. And the people who are making the policy decisions are all over 70 years old who are in that danger zone making these policy decisions when, you know, the school and the kids and yeah, the infections are going crazy and a thousand people in Alabama got infected. There was no hot. None of them went to the hospital. None of them. And, and right. I, I get it. Know, but what, what I'm it saying, is. if you're comparing it to the car accidents and the car, the only thing I will tell you is when you're in a car. You know, you're not going to necessarily purposefully go down and drive the wrong side of the street. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's what I think it's like when people are purposefully not doing the things that, you know, could prevent some of this. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. And I agree with that, too. I mean, we have to be smart about it. We can't just no masks. No, no, no. But, you know, I just think, uh, you know, lockdowns are, are insane. Uh, in Europe, I'm seeing not locking down, but have restrictions in place. And, you know, they're closing early in some places and, and lowering the restrictions from 50 to, to 30 percent, whatever it is. But not full lockdowns. But I'd like to no, see but the they are saying they encourage people to work from home now. That was today. Oh, they encourage people to work from. Yep, yeah, work. So. Boris uh, Johnson saying, hey, we're going to close this down. Schools stay open. Non-essential workers, please start working from home. So I, I, all I'm saying is there's some weirdness going on. And yeah. whether it's a second wave or whether it's not a second wave, it's a first wave, it's a discontinuation, it's not that uh, – I don't really care. Here's the, what I do care about, that it is affecting the psychology of the individual. Exactly. Just and like that's a, a vaccine will, even though I think right. people would be crazy to take it under 40. But that's going to change the sentiment, especially of all the people, that we have an actual vaccine that hopefully is 100 percent safe and proven yep. to be safe before the police. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. All right, so let's get to your next pick, too, because it's short, and it's a short that uh, Wayfair, 
And I've seen people try to short it, including one of our analysts here. Uh, definitely, they, they did it a good way. They didn't short it. They actually bought puts on it, so they only lost yep. the money put in. But, uh, but, it's, but not as much. <laughs> yeah, so Wayfair is just, I mean, it's a company that, that goes tremendously high. I actually started using them because we were looking for furniture, and it was a, a million times better experience than anyone else that, that I used because it was the first time I've ever used them. I didn't end up buying anything though, but it just it, it was great in terms of the service. I just found something on a different site that was a little bit better. But um, I was just interested to see it, and, and it was pretty good. Like just the emails, the follow ups, the funnels, and stuff like that. Yep, yep. they're technology. very good. At that. Here's a couple of things that are that most of their stuff is made not in the U.S., which I'm not saying that's good or bad, but I'm just saying quality of most of the merchandise is pretty low. They do, in fact, you could find the same exact pieces on other places cheaper. So you got to say, well, that that lends itself to the margin of what Wayfair is making on it. Um, I've gotten many things like little things like planters and things almost every single time I had to send it back. The something's chipped. It's, uh, you know, not what was, it doesn't look at, you know, I ordered something that was white. It came in like beige, um, you know, almost every time. And they, they'll do like, Hey, keep that. We'll send you another one. So whole, here's the thing. I just don't believe this in the sustainability of the price. I think a lot of that was due to the fact that people were rushing, uh, when we had the, Stay at home orders when we had the lockdowns, so we're like, okay, I have a laptop. That's fine for a few days. I can put it on my lap and my chair and I can work and I could sit in bed and do it. But wait a minute, I may be here for how long? And a lot of people went out and so started to set up small offices in their homes, as well as, you know, buying desks and things like that. But also saying, you know what, all right, if I'm going to be in my house, maybe I should get a new couch, maybe something a little bit. Now, I think some of that day has passed a little bit, especially if we're not going to have necessarily these lockdowns prices up about 300 since january 2020 um uh, it's a low cost and again a questionable quality of goods um they're still up uh, running at an operating loss annually they're 185 times forward pe at this point and you know the, what's the barrier to entry on this i don't know maybe they have products from everywhere do we see other companies getting into this game possibly um we've even seen companies that are in the high-end space like RH or restoration hardware do extremely well in this, but I just don't see that if we are on the tail end of all this, how this is a sustainable model uh, of growth uh, at any price, right? You know, at 185 times forward, um, at lo losing uh, losing money on a um, uh, operating basis, I just don't get it. You know what's funny though? I, I don't get it either. <laughs> but I could say this, and I don't get it. I don't get it. Like I didn't have Wayfair. I didn't, you know, I didn't get some, the move in Zoom. You know, but I do know that companies are, are going to trade at a, at a huge premium for growth. And if they continue blowing out those numbers on the growth, and like Zoom, maybe the, I've never seen growth like that in any company ever within a year stretch. And of course, it took a you know a pandemic, everybody coming home. But those numbers, whatever, two hundred million users from like a million, whatever, it's just like whoa. Right. But when I look at Wayfair, the only thing that worries me here is. You, you're right, 185 times forward PE. I looked at this at 70 times, 100 times, 120 times, and I said, and, and, but that, and it's now at 185 times, which guys means the stock keeps going up and up and up. So I don't know if I'm, I'm willing to, even no matter what the valuation is, to say it's at a certain valuation that now you have to worry, because I would think that valuation was 70x, 100x, it's 185x, right? So it's what's, there's got to be that, like you said, is it, has this been, you know, just drawn out long enough where we're getting to that tail end or, you know, but for me, when I, I don't look at it as valuation because anyone that tried to short these things of valuation has been so wrong the whole entire no, no, time. That, that's just one part of it. It's just one yeah. part. They're no. still running at an operating loss. You know, why are they still losing money on an operating basis? You know, and why is it that they can't um, with all the cheap products they have right now, they may also run into supply issues depending on also who's in the next president and how much the screws we tighten on China and other countries around the world. Uh, tariffs that go into play on this. I just, I just, I think it was really well set up for the pandemic idea of, okay, what could really do well? Well, I got to have a computer. So Dell and those companies did really well and Microsoft for uh, an Apple from all the sales of the phones and, and, and the laptops, et cetera. And then, I'd, well, I need to sit somewhere. Okay, I got desks and I'll do something to my house because I'm not going out. All I'm saying is if we get that vaccine, if we get something where people are going to be like, okay, you know what? Enough of this. I mean, do you think RV sales are going to continue to be crazy like they are forever? It depends Both because sales? you know what? Even with a vaccine, the market's going to be different for restaurants. Who goes to restaurants the most? I would say, out of the demographic, it's going to be sixty and over, like to go to restaurants. You know that they, they talking do. about they the millennials. Do. They don't know how to cook. Yeah. What are you talking about? 
Seriously. I, I mean, the, the expensive restaurants that I see in the city, when, when people go out, it's usually an older clientele. You know, they like to go out on Fridays and Saturdays, retired couples. It, it's whatever retirees like to do. If it's cruises or whatever, it, it's are they actually going to do even with a vaccine? Remember, these are the people that really have to worry. I mean, those are the statistics are telling us. I don't, so. think, I don't think the older people are buying this furniture. I think it's a younger crowd. It's cheaper. I think it's, again, uh, listen, this may go along with it is possible that it will continue going along with the 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 you know new home sales and all that, where people are moving out of an apartment in New York that has 420 square feet, where they have you know one couch, one bed, uh, and, and and a small dining, a little table with four seats. Whereas they go into a house, they're gonna have to refurnish. You know, a whole different situation than moving out to Jersey mm -hmm. or something like that, right? So that may be something, but it just appears to me that this is. The poster child, like Zoom is, the poster child of the potential pandemic stay at home. And once that kind of rolls, I just don't know if we're going to be willing to pay that much up for this kind of uh, name, especially when they are having such a, a, a extraordinary expense related to getting everything out there at this point. I don't and know. really quick, I want you to go before we go here. So, we're gonna, you know, I just want to make sure we get this in. But you you also you talk about a couple of fundamental things and operating losses and, and P. I mean, a lot has to do with technicals. You look at technicals a, yeah, a lot. Yeah, I'm sure you're looking yeah. at technicals here. Like that, that's what I was getting to where you, know, you look at valuation. Valuation has not been something that you could look at and say now right. it's time to short. So I'm sure, but the, if you're looking at charts, you may have seen something combined with this that you're saying when I combine everything together, this is a great chart. Could you talk I mean, a little bit? Yeah, yeah, I mean, when I look at the chart right now, I don't have it in front of me, but it kind of, kind of engraved in my mind right now. Um, when I look at the chart, there's definitely a, a level that it came up into, kind of blew out that top end, started to come down with the rest of the market right here. This kind of a, a hole, we call it, or a fast zone where we go vertically through price in a quick manner that looks like right now there is that opportunity and settle back probably about 20% lower from where we are right now. So if you kind of can look at a chart and you can see that, you'll see about 20% lower. Um, again, I don't have it right in front of me. I think it's about 20, 20, 21% lower. There's kind of a support level there. And I wouldn't be inclined uh, to take it below that point unless something really fundamentally breaks with everything. But you know what? We're going to have also a lot of weak hands that possibly got it on that real big upswing that happened last what month or so. I mean, it's been going up, but that, that really big move that happened over the last month or so, two months. And it just seems to me that uh, on a technical basis, this is very vulnerable. Not yeah, a lot of support no. down from here. No, I love that. I love that you combine everything. So, so I mean, we talked about a lot. We talked about ideas. Guys, you know, sometimes it gets lost when we talk about the economy. and the Fed. It's so important just from that, like in, to us talking about inflation. To me, you know, you're always looking for ideas. That could just I want you to expand it where sometimes you can go, well, the Fed and the interest rates. But but that leads to so many individual stock ideas when, when you have that outlook. So hopefully that comes across and, and we're not putting people to sleep. Because to me, that's interesting to you. It's interesting. I'm hoping it's interesting to the audience because it really doesn't matter. <laughs> but uh, uh, and we could talk about the economy in the Fed all day. So, yeah. but um, Andrew, if someone wants to get in touch, you learn more about you. How could they do that? Yeah, you go over to disciplinedinvestor.com. That's one place where we have all the information about our various strategies and what we do from Investology to uh, the long short strategy with the TDI managed growth strategy to our global allocations. Of course, the podcast on all fine podcast networks. Uh, you can find that as well as the Disciplined Investor. Just look me up online. Just click it into any any uh well everybody uses google nothing else i mean dog pile whatever it is out there these i still days. see a picture up there from like 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 20 years ago you look good of course why would i put anything else up <laughs> you like, you lost weight you look at what you're talking stupid. about <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so the discipline all right great stuff buddy. always love having you on everybody loves you you always provide great ideas your performance <laughs> track record has been great the last few times you were on man so i really really appreciate that uh and uh as always open invitation man so hopefully all right. Appreciate it. Let's keep it up. Thanks.